Hey guys, Tasha here from Start a School Crochet. Welcome to the tutorial on how to crochet your own mittens. These mittens are called the Tabby Star Crochet Mittens. And in this tutorial, we'll be working through my pattern. This is the pattern, and this pattern was available on my blog for free. You can download this PDF if you prefer, also available on my blog. The original version I did in blue was with Heartland yarn and that's by Lion Brand and this is a Heartland tweed it's really beautiful yarn um, and they were fingerless and no thumb because I kind of liked it that way so what this tutorial is going to teach you is not only how to work this pattern but also how to just generally design your own crochet gloves and unfortunately this yarn here which is yarn bees denim and color I'm so sad that this is discontinued because this is one of my favorite yarns you guys so um, if you want to find a similar yarn I looked online and I put the uh, yarn subs in the link but um, a good one is line brands cotton there's a new cotton blend they have this is a cotton blend 157 yards 3.5 ounces and it has about 144 meters. It's a 50% acrylic, 50% cotton. So it's a four weight, but it's slightly thicker. Um, this is a four weight as well, but this is not as thick. It has a different kind of uh, feel to it than this one does. But I'm hoping that you can find something similar to this. There's one called Baraco Vibe that I found also that looks very similar and has similar colors. So. The way to work a mitten, we're going to just go over this real quick. Um, so here is one that's similar to the one that does not have the thumb. And it also doesn't have the flap to go over it as a mitten. So you can see what the difference those two accents make to your glove pattern or your mitten pattern. Um, this one is worked, the tabby star is worked from the top down what that means is this is the top of your hand you're working from the top of your hand down up to your elbow so instead when you were crocheting you're actually working from this is the first row and then you're working up this way and then I worked the cuff last so when you put it on you can see I created a seam for this one and actually this is my right hand so I'm gonna go ahead and put on my right hand um, I created a seam for that reason right there is because when I'm fumbling with my stuff of course the thumbs would let me know which is right hand and left handed if I have the thumb on there but because I chose thumbless for this um, design when I originally did it um, it doesn't work out that way so I made a seam but if you'd like you can crochet this in the round which is another way you can do mittens is you just crochet in a seamless round and I'm actually doing that here and what you do when you crochet in the round is you need to place a stitch marker on the beginning or the end the either the beginning stitch or the last stitch of each round that you're working and this I'm actually working the top to this mitten so I will go through all the stitches and everything but I just wanted to give you the basic idea on how to cro crochet your own mittens now first before we jump into the pattern so crocheting your own mittens you want to start by measuring with a measuring tape around your hand here mine measures about seven inches I have a small hand so this pattern is written for seven inches and I'm modifying it just a little bit to add for a wider hand and a smaller hand so Mine is seven inches. I started off this pattern with 25, 25 around, and it fits my hand perfect. So remember, this is the top. I'm just gonna put my hand in there. So when you're making your own crochet mittens, um, you wanna basically measure around your hand and leave just a little bit of stretch if you want so you can move your hands freely. Um, 25 worked perfect for me. It might be a little bit longer for you or less for you. So let's talk about the thumbs. 
it's different for your right and your left hand. So this is the actually my left-handed glove and this is my right-handed glove. We're going right to left. So we're actually starting here. I'm going to put it this way and then we're working all the way around to here. So I worked 17 or 18 stitches until I got to the opening of my thumb. Then I chained. You make a chain, you skip those stitches, and then you pick up back again on the other side. So for the right hand, you start off with three stitches and then you work four chains and then 18 stitches around to the other side. But I'll go over all of that in detail um, in this tutorial. And I know this is taking a little bit longer, but this is going to be a long tutorial because it's how to do it. And then we'll also go over the assembly of this glove and how to work the border. And when you're doing your own crochet glove, you can choose any kind of border you want. I'll also show you how to attach a thumb to this. Okay, guys, thanks for sticking through this intro. Thank you for watching. And also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up and a like. And let's get crocheting. And when you're working a mitten, you don't have to have a detachable mitten. This is detachable. I wanted it to be that way so I can work on my computer or, you know, keep my thumbs open so I can text message, for instance. Um, but it's great to have this kind of mitten because when you want to drive the car and you get cold or you're on your lunch break or whatever, you can just close it on up. And the top of this loop, because you can use an elastic for that. Um, I used a button with just a little piece of yarn to secure it. But I'm thinking, because I have a tiny bit of OCD, that I'm going to put a button here. So I can button it down just a little bit there. So it doesn't look so funny on the way out, like that. <laughs> but you can work your mitten from bottom to top like this and if you wanted to do a mitten that's completely um, just continuous without any detachable aspects you could just work your pattern from the top like we just like we did all the way up until you reach this part of your thumb and then that's where you would make your um, thumb hole and then make your thumb hole come back around and work all the way back down again and then you just have and then just sew the top up like I'll show you how to do in this video and I just did with this one you sew it on the inside just bring all the pieces together and then that was the top of your mitten but you could always just work it straight down this is the top work it straight on down and then make your thumb hole and work it on and then create your cuff and then you'll just have a complete solid mitten you can um, create your thumb like this with a hole in it or just like you did the top of your mitten just create your thumb long enough and close it by sewing it together and then you just have complete traditional classic mittens so Let's get on with the tutorial on how to create these interchangeables called the Tabby Star. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. The first thing we're going to do is you'll want, you'll want to determine how wide you want your whole your opening to be at the top of your mitten so for my hand I have a this is where the measuring tape comes in handy um, I have very small hands so this pattern is written for somebody with really small hands mine are about seven inches around um, the actual mitten my original mitten measures about eight inches around um, I like it just a little bit loose, not too tight. The tabby star pattern has a chain of 25 to start. So go ahead and chain 25. If you need to chain more for the size of your hand, um, 
if it's larger than seven inches. That's not going to make much of a difference in the rest of the pattern. When it, the only difference it will make really is when it comes to the number of stitches you make before your thumb hole and the number of stitches of your thumb hole and the number of stitches coming after your thumb hole. Flat up like this and then I kind of bend it around and go into that first hole. I'm not sure if you guys can hear this or not, but my upstairs to neighbor decided to start playing Creedence Clear Auto Revival really, really loud. I'm gonna chain one single crochet into the first. You can crochet through both or just the top loop. Okay, let's chain or single crochet 25 and meet around. So actually, it sounds like a Christmas party. <laughs> okay, I hope you guys don't mind it. It's actually kind of nice given everything that's going on right now. Um, so I have completed my single crochet, my first round. What we're going to do now is decide whether or not you want to work in the round for your mittens or do joins. So I did a join for my original pattern, so I'm going to do a join for this pattern. If you do the joins, you're going to join into the chain, not the stitch itself, but into the chain. And if you're not doing a join, you'll go straight and start working into your first single crochet. But before you do that, you'll want to mark the last stitch of your round the through the front little loop there, get a locking stitch marker because then you won't accidentally knock it out, which I've done before. And so then you'll start working your next round too. For round two, I'm going to join into this chain because that's how I did it before, so I want to do that again. I'm going to chain one. If you're working in the round, you don't need to chain one. You just keep going and just keep working around and around. Row, round two is a half double crochet, and we're going to work half double crochet into each single crochet from the previous round. If you're not familiar with a half double crochet, you yarn over first, insert your hook into the stitch, Grab your yarn, pull up a loop, you'll have three. Grab your yarn, pull through all three. That's how simple a half double crochet is. So work 25 half double crochets, pause the video, and we'll come right back. So I've come around to the last part, and here's my stitch marker. If I were working in the round, this would be the last stitch of my round, and so I, I would know that the next stitch would be the first stitch of my round, and that's important when it comes to the end. But for me, and anybody else working the um, regular pattern, it's not. So we're going to work into that last half single crochet. And then we're going to, this is our chain here. This is our actual stitch there. So I'm going to close it up. But first, count your stitches and make sure you have 25. 2, 4, 6, 8, 24, 25. That's great. So I'm going to actually work my join into the chain. For round three, people working the pattern, chain one. For round three not, just doing continuous, just keep going in, in your rounds. And this is our half double crochet. Half double crochets have two different top loops, it looks like. There's three loops total on top. Um, and what we're going to do is work into the very, very, very back loop, which is called the third loop. So it's the first loop, second loop, third loop. This is front loop, back loop, third loop. <laughs> so yarn over, insert your hook into that very back loop. And it's kind of good to kind of pull your work forward a little bit. You can bend it forward even. I kind of smush it this way. So it's just easier to get my stitches in. And I also switch to a pencil hold for that one because I find half double crochets are a lot easier with a pencil hold. So when you're working this pattern it's actually easier to work it inside out because when you're working it back loop that's that. the loop you're working into is that third loop you just go straight back into there and it just makes it a whole lot easier and then when you're finished just flip it back out. So work 25 half double crochets in the third loop, oops, all the way around. I've worked my 25 half double crochets, I'm coming up on the end here. 
I'm going to join into my chain. If you're working in the round, just keep working in the round. Also, for rows four, you're just going to repeat this round. I say rows four to six for the tabby pattern, but if you are designing your own, this is where you would decide whether or not you would like to make these longer. Um, when I say longer, I mean if you want more space on top for your hand. So I'll show you what I mean because these are somewhat short. See how they come up? I made these to come up to right here, so they don't really cover all of my fingers. And when we work the top flap, you'll also modify the top flap if you want this longer. You won't be crocheting as many rows for that top flap. But for this one, I have um, about six rows before I get to my thumb hole. So if you would like this part to be longer, you want to crochet more rows right now, and then um, you can make it longer for it to come up on your fingers higher like that, or you could cover up your pinky. I have a very small pinky, by the way. Um, okay, so, but for this pattern, the tabby pattern, the written pattern, I stop at row six, so crochet, and that will be for the short, the shorter pattern. So crochet up to row six, and you're going to repeat the round three, which is half double crochet into the third loop of each stitch. Welcome to Memphis, y'all. They singing all shook up out there. <laughs> round seven, which is going to be our hole, our thumb hole, we're going to do 18 double, or half double crochets. So at the end of round six, you're going to join like normal, do your half double crochet, in the back loop only of each until you reach 18. For those who are working the other pattern or working your own or trying to design your own, you're going to want to, what you're going to want to do, it's for the left hand, you're going to want to decide where you want your hole to be. So you will have to basically, since this is from the top, it's upside down show you how to determine that so you're going to turn it around like this I that's why I also like using a seam because it just makes it easier but a stitch marker is fine too so here's my seam and I'm gonna put this on my hand actually so I put it on my hand and I'm actually crocheting around from my seam which is here crocheting around till I come to my thumb so that's where I want to make my hole. I don't want to make it too close to the thumb, but you could make it, you could crochet more and make the thumb hole smaller. I used four stitches. You can use three stitches if you want to make it tighter. And then you pick back up on the other side. So I'm going to take it off and we'll show you how to do that. So I crocheted 18. I'm going to chain four. I'm going to skip four stitches, one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to start again with a half double crochet, third loop only, in the next stitch. Like that. And then I'm going to close out with two more stitches. The pattern calls for three half double crochet to close out the round. So that's what it looks like when you have your thumb hole. And you can see, test it, put it on. I always like to test stuff. So put it on, see if that's what you want. If not, you can chain three here make it smaller, chain three, skip three, and that's how you modify the design for your thumb hole. So for the next round, which is round eight, you're going to do the same thing. Join with this, join in the slip stitch with a, join in the chain with a slip stitch, and then chain one and begin your next round working half double crochets in the third loop. And that first one, is a little tricky, but make sure you count your stitches and that you have 25 stitches throughout. For the one people that are doing just in rounds, you're just going to continue doing your round. One thing I wanted to mention was about the right and left hand. So the pattern, there's two row sevens. That's because one is for your left hand and one is for your right hand. And it says 17 on there, but I, I'm changing that. So 
So we'll be doing, yeah, if you're, you're modifying it for your right hand. So instead of chaining 17 or 18 at the beginning, you'll be chaining the same amount your chain at the end here on your right hand. So if I were to put this on my right hand, you can see it just, this would be the beginning and this would be the end. Hope that makes sense. That's to keep your seam on the inside. A note for round eight, we'll be working the um, half double crochets into the chain Work into the top two because it gives a little bit of more stability, just a little bit um, than just one loop sometimes doesn't give a lot of stability. So you're going to actually work into the chain and not around the chain. Although for design purposes, if you want to work around the chain, you're more than welcome to. You'll be working the thumb holes rows from row 8 to 23. That's for the pattern. But if you have uh, wanted to extend it or make it longer, you'll be working more rounds this way. And when you put it on, you can see how long it is. Mine is mine comes up mid almost to my elbow. You can see we're not halfway, a little bit less than halfway. The original I did a few more rounds and that one comes up a little bit further. The yarn is not as thick as the one I'm using for the tutorial, so it's a little um, more flexible. And that one comes up just a little bit further. So decide how many rounds you want to do. I did 23 for this one. For this one I did about 18. And that's just your personal preference. You can also, um, after you're finished, before we work, I'm going to show you how to work this design. But if you want to eliminate this, you don't have to put it on there for your mittens. You can do a, just a half double crochet or a single crochet or even find a cute border to use. So that's your decision entirely. But right now we're going to work through and I'm going to show you for the tabby star pattern how to work this border. I just finished my round. I'm going to join. Can you guys hear that music? I'm going to join. I'm going to chain two and this will be considered round 24 for the pattern. Chain two and then we're going to do a double crochet in the third loop of each half double crochet that we worked for the previous round. And for those who don't know how to do a half or a double crochet, for those who do, skip on to the next part. And for those that don't, a double crochet is where you yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, grab and pull up one loop, grab your yarn and pull through two, grab your yarn and pull through two until you just have one left on your hook. So go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back at the end of this round. Come to the end of round 24. I'm going to join in the second chain from my chain two at the beginning with a slip stitch. And then for round 25, I'm going to chain two like I did in the previous round and work a front post double crochet around my first double crochet. So a front post, for those who don't know what it is, is you yarn over once, you insert your hook around the stitch and out the front, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, you'll have three on your hook, then grab your yarn, pull through two, grab your yarn and pull through two, just like a regular double crochet. And we work a front post double crochet around each of the 25 double crochets that we have in our round. So for those working a different border, you can skip on, skip this part and go to the next part or, um, where we do the top of the mitten. But for those who aren't, just you can skip to the end of this and we'll work round 26, which is our final round. See, it's not that hard. This is the end of my round and I wanted to show you something that might be confusing for newbies. Um, this is my chain right here. The chains don't count as a stitch, but as I'm crocheting, I was almost about to go like this and go, oh, but no, that's my chain. So I don't want to mess with that. I just want to use it. 
as a join and that's my seam so we're going to work round 26 so I'm going to join into the second chain then I'm going to chain two like we did for the previous round 25 but what we're going to do different now is join these two together so when you do a front post stitch it leaves a ridge in the back this is a little bit of a tip and sometimes you might not get around the right stitch if you don't kind of push that ridge back um, go in and around your first post yarn over pull up yarn over and pull through two then instead of completing your double crochet you're going to yarn over again insert your hook around the next stitch pull up you'll have four on your hook yarn over pull through two then you'll have three then you close out the stitch and it takes the two stitches down to one the rest of the row round is the same double crochet front post around each and when you get to the end you'll have two stitches left when you have you work 21 of these I'm coming up on the end here and it kind of looks like I have three stitches there but like I was saying before that is not a stitch that's your seam and you can always you know if you're working in the round you're not going to have this seam um, because you're just continuously working in the round so for these last two stitches we're going to join again with our front post double crochet two together and we've completed that and for our last and final join we're going to join in the top of the chain and that's it here so. is where you would cut your yarn leave a little bit of a long tail and tie it off and you would have your mittens completed if you're doing the simple version of this tabby star with the thumbs out